Hey everyone, this is Nancy. It's Nancy at Sipping and Painting Hamden. Today we're going to paint this beautiful painting of Irish Hills. One of our customers in our studio at Sipping and Painting Hamden in Denver uh, brought in a photo of travels and said this was something, a photo that was snapped in Cork, Ireland. I have no idea. I haven't been to Ireland before, but I thought it was really a pretty image and uh, uh, that customer left that image for us. So uh, I'm pretty excited and gave us permission to, to use that image. So we're going to go ahead and, and paint this beautiful painting of what we call the Irish Hills. Ready? Thanks. All right. So what I have is I have four brushes. I have a small, I have a large, small, large, medium, and a fan. You don't have to have a fan brush. I just like to show it to you. So when we do our kits for our customers, um, our inexpensive kits that they can buy here, we just give them the three brushes because you can do anything with these three brushes, uh, large and medium, flat, and a small round. Um, but I like to put in a plug for fans. Fans are my favorite brush. If these were pine trees, you can uh, use a fan brush really nicely. I'm not quite sure what these shapes are. I have no idea. I've never been to Cork, Ireland. I've never been to the Irish Hills. And so I don't know what those shapes are. Um, so we'll probably just use those with our small brush, uh, but I like to have those four around. All right, I also have paints. I have white, red, black, blue, and yellow. So it's your primary colors, your three primary colors plus black and white. I have a 16 by 20 canvas here. I have my stack of napkins and I have my trusty old water jar. And hopefully you can see me painting well. And off we go. Ready? Let's do it. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my brush in the water. I'm gonna go back and forth. By the way, we're using acrylic paints today. Unless I specify otherwise in one of my videos, we're always gonna be using acrylic paints. I do teach Bob Ross wet and wet. I haven't started making videos of that yet. Those are much longer classes and those require oil paints. We also teach watercolor workshops here at Civic and Painting Hamden. And, uh, but 90% of the time we do acrylic because it's fast and easy and you can paint with it in about two hours and have a fabulous painting. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, uh, the underpainting up here is blue. So under this black, there's some blue. So I'm gonna pick up blue on both sides of my large flat brush and I'm going to put in, put in a blue sky. I wanna keep it messy. Anytime I do a sky, I keep them messy because skies really are messy and then they change. Five minutes later, that sky's gonna look different. So I like to keep it messy. All right, notice I'm painting the tops and the sides. That's why I don't use this, this thing too often. I like to paint the tops and the sides because that creates a gallery wrap. All right, so I'm gonna let that messy blue dry. That's exactly what I want, is messy. So if you're, you have a mess, good for you. You're ahead of the game. That's what we want, okay? I'm gonna let that dry a few minutes, okay? I'm gonna clean my brush again. Always clean your brushes in between painting. And then you'll know if your brush is clean. Keep swishing, swishy, swishy like a fishy. That's what I tell the little kids. You'll know your brush is clean if you dab it and the watermark on your napkin is clean. You don't use your napkins to clean an acrylic. You use the water, but then you dab it on your napkin. So. Let's see, still not clean. Halo blue is a very powerful pigment. It takes a while to clean off your brushes. All right, close enough, pretty good. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up some white. I'm gonna go ahead in, and I'm gonna put in this center area here where there appears to be some kind of a setting sun. So I just put white on both sides of my brush and I'm scratch scratching it in the center area. Why would I bother painting white on a white canvas? 
because it's going to blend with what else I put on. Next, I'm going to pick up some yellow on my brush. And this is a slightly deeper yellow than you might normally use. This is, um, I forgot what this one's called. I'll have to think about that. But anyway, it's, there are lots of different shades of yellow. This one is a little deeper. It's a little um, more on the warm side. It's not a lemon yellow. It's a chrome yellow, that's what it is. So this painting definitely has some chrome yellow in it, lots of it. So I'm going to start to, again, be messy, be messy. No, ra just random strokes, folks, random strokes in my skies. I'm going to keep picking up more of this yellow, chrome yellow paint. Now, if you don't have chrome yellow, that's okay. Put the tiniest drop of red in it. Just the teeny tiniest drop, like a ladybug of red in yours, in a uh, little scoop and you'll get a deeper red. Sorry, a deeper yellow. That's what I meant to say, deeper yellow. All right, so notice I'm just swirling it on, swirling it on, and then I'm gonna always paint the sides because I want it to be a gallery wrap. Always gonna do that. And I'm gonna bring it down about three quarters of the way down the painting. Yeah, about three quarters of the way down the painting. And I'm sometimes doing figure eight strokes, and sometimes I'm doing swirls, and sometimes I'm doing crisscrosses. It doesn't really matter. But when your brush starts to get dry, don't pick up any more. Just kind of wipe it off on the canvas. We can always go over that with black, and you'll never know that yellow's even down there. Cleaning my brush on the canvas. And then the reason I did that is I want a dry brush, mostly dry brush, to come in and feather where the white meets the yellow. Because I want that, that light to just fade into the yellow and just be a really pale, pale area of yellow. I don't want it to be like ice cream melted on my canvas. I want it to just be soft, just soft. So with a dry brush, when the paint is about 75% dry, uh, by the way, acrylic paint dries really fast. I'm in Denver and it's very dry here, so acrylic paint dries in about five minutes, as long as you don't have big, big scoops of it. Oops, picked up some blue, is that okay? Absolutely, absolutely. When you were a kid, you watched Bob Ross, you probably heard him say, happy accident. I make happy accidents on all the time. Doesn't matter if I'm painting with watercolor or with acrylic or with oil. I make happy accidents all the time. But that's okay. This is a messy painting and it's going to be perfect if that happens. All right. In fact, I still have a little on my brush and I'm just going to swirl it in and not worry about it because this guy is messy. All right. Nice. So this is looking pretty good. This has some orange in it. You'll see some orange. So I'm going to mix a little bit of my red there's a dot and a little bit of my yellow together, and I'm going to make an orange. Now the red is really powerful, so I'm going to pick up more yellow. It depends on the brand of paint that you use. It also depends on, you know, the exact measurement. But in general, red and reds and blues are very powerful pigments, so you don't need as much of those. Yellows tend to be a little weaker, and you need to add a little white sometimes to get a yellow to show up. All right, so I need to put these reds in there, these oranges, messy, really messy, really, really, really messy. And I'm gonna do that by blotching, splotching and blotching and poking. Notice I'm doing different marks with my brush because I want this to look really, this, orange to look really random. Now this painting so far is looking crazy. And if you're questioning my art abilities, I wouldn't be at all surprised. Not at all. But I, there's method to my madness, I promise. So I'm just twisting and turning my brush, trying to get all that orange off. And you will see in a moment exactly why I did that. All right. 
And a little more down here. Now I didn't pick up any more orange paint. I only used what I had to begin with. And I'm gonna let it dry for a, a brief time, just wiping off anything that's still on my brush. Anything that's still on my brush. Now this would be a good time to go grab that cup of coffee if it's already made, or um, you know, take about a minute, just a minute. If we're in the bathroom, go down and let that dry just a bit, but not much longer than a minute, okay? Because I want it, I want it to set partially. I want that paint to keep some of those blotches. And then I'm gonna come in with my brush really dry, wiping it back and forth on my napkin first to make sure that brush is really dry. I'll show you. I need a dry brush, really dry. Okay. Now, it's been about a minute. I'm gonna come back in and I'm going to do some crisscross strokes and I'm gonna blend that. Now, because I can do this with acrylic, if it's about 50% or less dry, maybe 25 to 50% dry. In other words, if it's a little wet and a little dry, then you can blend really nicely, really nicely. But you won't get rid of those orange spots. And that's what we're going for in this sky. We want those orange spots. We like the orange spots. We like a messy. We don't want all this blended away. If I had blended all of this orange into the yellow, I would have a lovely peachy color. Lovely, absolutely lovely. However, it would not, it would not really do justice to this um, swirling, choppy, fun, interesting, moving sky. We wouldn't have that look if we just let it, let it dry. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, all right, now what I'm gonna do is, there's some purple up in here, in this painting, and also down in here. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take my brush, and it's still my dirty brush. I, I wiped it really clean and dry, but I don't want this color to be bright. So the fact that I wipe my brush really well and it's still got a little bit of that dirt in it, it's okay. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my red, I'm gonna take a little bit of my blue, and I'm gonna mix them together. Okay, that makes a very dark color. So I'm gonna pick up a little white. What I'm going for is purpley. Doesn't have to be a great purple, just has to be kind of purple. All right, now depending on the kind of red you use and the kind of blue you use, you will get a different shade of purple. For example, I have phthalo blue and I have fire red. It's making a kind of grayer um, purple. But if I had, say, an ultramarine blue or and a magenta, it would, it would make a slightly different blue. But these are beginning painting classes, so I don't worry. I just don't worry about any of it. And I hope you won't either. Any purple shade, any color purple will do the trick. It doesn't matter if it's the same as your inspiration photo. No one's ever gonna see your inspiration photo. They're just gonna look at your painting and say, oh my goodness, you're a genius. All right. So this is a, a muddy purple for sure. It's muddy, but I'm okay with that. I'm really fine with that. If I add a little more red, let's see what happens. We'll get a little brighter. I'm not real happy with this fire red, but you know, like I said, it just depends. Depends on what you use. Getting a little brighter. All right, so I'm gonna call that good. Whatever color it's coming out, that's what it's meant to be. And I'm just gonna do the same thing with that purpley color down in here. See a little bit more of it uh, up in here. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with that orange. Same thing, same thing, same thing. I picked up a little bit of red because I'm thinking I have blue underneath some of this. So up on top where it's blue, I'm just gonna go for it with a little bit more red. Why not? It's my painting. 
It's my world. I can do it however I want, and so can you. That's the beauty of painting. You can make this however you want. If you don't want to use my colors, don't. Use whatever colors you want. Yeah. Your world, your painting, you go, look, if I put some more blue in there, it's fine. Absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. I need to get a little bit more down in here. All right. Now, it's not going to look exactly like the other painting, but I don't really care. I'm happy. I am happy, happy. All right, now I'm going to let that sit a minute before I, I start to brush it out a bit, okay? Um, anywhere else I want to put some? Mm, I don't really see any other areas that I would feel strongly about it. So I'm just going to go with that. Yeah, I'm just going to go with that. I'm going to let it sit a minute. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did with the orange by scritch scratching on some more. By scritch scratching, sorry, by scritch, uh, using a dry brush and brushing it out. That's what I'm going to say. All right, so there's a little lighter, has a little more white in it. You can always add more white if you want in areas. You just decide where you want this. All right, so I'm going to let, I'm going to wipe off my brush. I'm going to put it in the water and clean it. And I want a clean, dry brush to do that, that scrubbing technique that I showed you that blends away. I promised you in this video that I would also show you how fan brushes work. And you don't have to have a fan brush for this painting, but I just want to show you fan brushes are great for a lot of different things. And I'm always trying to push fan brushes. I just love fan brushes. They're good for hair, painting hair, uh, hair and grasses. They're also good for um, blending skies, which we'll show you in a minute. And they're also really great for making pine trees. So I could turn one of these into a pine tree if I wanted just to show you. Um, and in fact, maybe I will. So I'm letting this set a minute. I'm just gonna let that set a minute before I start blending. Um, and I'm seeing big clumps. Now you'll know if your paint is still wet, if it's shiny, that's one way to do it. A second way to do it is you can pick it up and wipe it on someone that's sitting next to you. But you know what? You won't make a lot of friends that way, so I don't recommend that second way. Uh, but you can definitely, definitely um, just look at it and see if it's shiny, and then you'll know it's wet. And if you, while I'm waiting for that, if you see any areas that, you know, you want to put a little more orange color in with your fan, with any brush, doesn't really matter, you can do that. I'm just looking around and thinking, oh, some little pops of a brighter orange might be kind of fun. But you don't have to do it exactly my way. I just like to look at this painting and think about where things are. I'm not married to exactly where those things are. No one's going to see this painting, this image. No one's going to see the inspiration photo before it was painted. And no one's going to, prob it's probably pretty rare that at that moment in the Irish Hills and Ireland, that night, someone took an exact photo from the exact same space and will say to you, you know, there wasn't a little blob of orange there. Yeah, so this is your world. You, you do what's pretty to you. You just do what's pretty to you and don't worry. Just don't worry. I love it uh, when we have our private event classes. I love it when uh, accountants and engineers come in here and they want, they want instructions on how to make things exactly like the inspiration photo or the inspiration painting. <laughs> I, I have a good time telling them that they need to have a glass of wine and relax a bit because it's not about making them look the same. And I've told this story a lot in a lot of my classes so far. But when I went down to get my Bob Ross certification, and again, those are oil paints. This is not that. But when I went down to get my certification from people in Florida that actually knew Bob Ross, somebody told me that when Bob painted, he would paint three versions of the exact same composition. One that he would take to his producer when they're planning the show, one that he would practice on about 30 minutes in advance, and one that's what he painted on the show. And he would leave his paintings for the PBS station so that they could sell them and make some money. He was a wonderful, wonderful patron for the, and fundraiser for the PBS stations, probably the best. 
And when you look at his paintings, no, none of them look the same. It's really amazing. The, he can have the same composition and not one of those paintings will look just like another. So I'm still letting that dry, but I'm about to stop with this. I'm having too much fun with this orange. Too much fun, too much. But, oh man, it's fun. Painting's fun. All right. Okay, did you see how fun that fan brush is to use to blend? Fan brushes are fantastic. I don't know who invented fan brushes, but I wanna go shake their hand. I wanna, I wanna take them out for a drink or shake their hand or get them an ice cream, whatever they like, and just say thank you. Thank you for inventing fan brushes because they're lovely. I love fan brushes, they're so much fun. I should do a class called fan, fun with fan brushes. All right, so I've got this wispy, pretty, orangey sky. And I'm gonna come in with that dirty fan brush and I'm gonna start on the up side. And I'm gonna do really quick crisscross growths. Now my paint's setting quite a bit, that's okay. That's okay. So I'm gonna have to be a little more aggressive because it's set quite a bit. That's a good thing, that's a good thing. Because look at, look at how some of it's blending and where it's blending, it's making nice in-between colors. Ooh. I got a little pile there, didn't I? That's all right, that's all right. That's okay. I'm gonna let this dry a little bit, it's still pretty wet. But I'm getting all these nice colors and shades and oh my goodness, I'm gonna put some black up here later. The sky is on fire, it's fantastic. Okay, and I'm gonna come down here, crisscrosses, crisscrosses, crisscrosses to get some of those shades and colors mixing in. And I can only do this kind of blending with all these colors if it's just a little bit wet. If it's not a little bit wet, you can't do this. So you can always add a little bit more water to your brush. Dab it off so you don't get drips. You don't want drips. Those are drips. You don't want drips. And then come back in and do this fast. Now I could be doing this with my big brush. In fact, why don't I? In case you don't have a fan, let's do it with big brush. All right. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth and I'm creating all kinds of shades and colors and whatnot in this painting. And nice, okay. And yeah, it's kind of messy, but you know what? Even if yours doesn't look like mine and it's more messy, no one's ever gonna see the original. Just make sure you have this brighter orange and yellow area down here, because that's the setting sun. That's the setting sun. All right, now I'm gonna be brave. Oops, I'm gonna clean that up. My brush is picking up a lot of paint, it's getting wet. So I'm gonna dab it and get it dry again because this only works with a dry brush. All right, I'm gonna come back in here. Wish me luck, okay? Wish me luck. Well, that's nice. Some purple going on up there. I like that. All right. Nice. And you're probably thinking, oh, what a mess. Holy cow, what a mess. It is a mess, and I'm I'm loving this mess. All right. Now I'm gonna put a little, I'm gonna put a little black on my brush, and I'm gonna put black at the tip top and way up here on the top of the canvas and on the sides. I'm not picking up any more. I'm just using that one dip in the black. That's all I'm going to do. And then I'm going to go crisscross applesauce. Crisscross, 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 crisscross. And I'm going to bring in some of that black, some of that black into the upper portion. And if you want to make it go farther, dip it in the water, dab it on your napkin, and then just the dirt that's on my napkin, the black, that's there, we'll finish her up. All right. Dipping again in the water, dabbing it on my napkin, and I'm just using the black that's already there so I don't have to pick up too much. And the reason I don't want to pick up too much of that black is because I like all these different shades in my sky in the underpainting. I like having some blue poking through up there. I like that. Because to me, that's what a sky really looks like. It's, it's moody, it's messy. It's not all one solid color and blocks. It has movement. 
what I mean by movement is different colors are swirling in, in and out, in and out, in and out, having a party, getting to know each other. Yeah, like that, like that. Um, I think they're having, they're cavorting down here as well. Definitely. All right. Now, I can't see my painting from close up, and you can't see your painting from close up. So I have to look in the camera and see what I'm doing. And you have to step back. You have to go for a walk. You have to walk away from your painting, go away about 15 feet and see what it looks like. You can't see your painting close up. You just can't. My theory about painting is that painting is like raising teenagers. I raised three. And you don't appreciate them when they're in your face all the time. You just don't. You, you start to resent them. You start to not like them. And teenagers have told me the exact same thing about parents. And when you're raising teenagers, you're going to send them away for a few hours or a couple of days and just let them be themselves and you get away and you have a break. And then you come back and you say, you know, I love that crazy kid. And I love this painting too. I just need a little break from it. So sometimes you got to get up and look at, look at it from the way somebody else would look at it. And what I'm doing here is I'm just touching up some brighter yellow in some spots. And, you know, you can fiddle with it. But let me tell you, if you fiddle too much, if it's 80% good, leave it alone. If you fiddle too much, you're going to not like it anymore. Okay? So mine's looking pretty similar to the original. It's not perfect, but it's close enough. And I'm pretty good with close. Um, I'm pretty happy with anything that looks close enough. That's, that's what I'm going for. All right, so I'm going to let this dry a bit. Actually, I don't even have to because my next color is black. So this would be a good spot for you to uh, turn off your um, video for a little bit and go get a beverage or go to his restroom or do whatever you need to do, return that phone call, and then come on back. And I'm just going to keep going. All right, so here we go. I'm going to keep going. Next, I'm going to sketch out with my big brush and black on it. I'm going to sketch out that shape on the bottom. Now, if I don't have exactly the same shape of that hill, who cares? Nobody's going to know. Not one person's going to know, except maybe the person who snapped that photo. That's, they're the only ones that are going to know. All right, so I'm going to say that's it. And then I'm going to take my black paint and I'm going to fill it in. I'm just going to fill it in. So as long, as long as you have hills in there and they're not regular, they're not whoop, 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 like a wave, but a wave pool, you don't want it too symmetrical. You don't want it to look like South Park art. You know, you don't want this. Perfect waves. You just want random messy hills, some bigger than others, some sharp, some, some wider. Just make it random so that no two hills look alike. And then fill it in with your black paint. Just fill it in. Just fill it in. I'm using my big brush. It makes this whole process really fast. Now, if using your big, big brush for those, uh, for the outline of the hills was too much, use your small brush to do that outline or to fix that outline. Use your small brush. And what I should have said and I forgot is, you know, it's about a hand, spread hands width up. But I think you probably figured that out. My viewers are smart people. I think you got this. Now remember, paint on the sides too. And then all the way down into the corners. If you have little splotches, that's okay because it would look that way in real life. Little areas of light. Doing the sides. And then where it's dry, I'm going to pick it up. And I'm going to paint on the underside too. Just like that. Just like that. I'm liking this painting. It's pretty, huh? All right. Now this, this next part's pretty easy. If you need, if you need more time, stop your video and then come back. And I'm going to keep going, okay? 
So I'm going to put my big brush in the water. I'm going to use my small brush, okay? And I'm going to put it in the black paint. Now, if your black paint is getting really thick because it's drying out, add a few drops of water. You want this to be like um, thick ink and not chocolate syrup or pudding. You want it to, to just be thin enough that you can put it on your brush. And then I like to chisel my baby brush like this on the side of the plate to sharpen it a bit. And then this one, it's about a closed hand width this way. And the one on this side, the left side is taller. So I'm gonna make a skinny, like an upside down ice cream cone. A really skinny, now make it bumpy, make it bumpy. If that's a tree or a bush, and I'm not sure what these are, maybe it's a steeple, I don't really know. I've never been there, but it's a pretty painting nonetheless. I want the sides to be bumpy because even if it's a steeple, it appears to be bumpy in the original and probably in the photograph because one of our artists did this from the photo, copy to photograph. So I'm going to make it look like I see it. And I don't have to know exactly what that is, if it's a tree or if it's some kind of a steeple. I just don't need to know. But what I do need to know is that it's little bumpy on both sides. Now the next two definitely look like they have a rectangular shape at the base. They definitely look like that. Why? I don't know. Well, I'm going to go with it. Because remember, we were originally copying a photo that somebody brought in, somebody shared with us. All right. Uh, it's actually uh, the customer painted from the photo and I just loved it and I asked him and he said he could he would let us paint from that. So okay so there's these definitely look like bases of some kind and then these two seem to be about the same height and about the same weight but they're also bumpy and jaggedy on the sides. So do not make them straight. Make it messy. Make it messy. And then this one, same thing. I'm hoping in the comments below, when I put this on YouTube, I'm hoping in the comments below, someone will find a photo that's similar to this and then solve this mystery for us. What are these shapes? What is that? I don't know, but I'm hoping you'll help me out. All right, now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to Take my baby brush and I'm going to show you how to make far away pine trees with a baby brush. Now these are just kind of scratch, scratched on there. They're kind of like the idea of pine trees, but they're so vague and so messy that you don't really know. So I'm going to try to do it like that. I'm going to put my pinky down. Oh, that's still wet, but I can do it somewhere or not. But if your painting is dry right there, you can put your pinky down. I'm just going to start about an inch up and I'm just gonna zigzag back and forth, messy, messy, messy. And I got a little pine tree. I'm gonna do it again, start up here. I still have some paint in my brush. I'm gonna zigzag back and forth. And when you do a pine tree, it's basically uh, an upside down ice cream cone or pizza slice. It's, a tri it's um, triangular. It always has a point at the top. That's where the little baby parts are coming out. So always make them pointy so your eye knows that's a pine tree, okay? And let's do another one. Just make it wider at the base. Wide, pointy on top, wider at the base. If it gets too fat, you can always start up higher. You can always start higher and then do it, give it a top. So it's just taller. And then, <laughs> People always put a little stick down here at the bottom and that's only on a Christmas tree or a pine tree that you would find in a park. Because in nature, when they're grown naturally, those branches are all the way down to the ground. So you won't have that stump. That's, that's Christmas trees. That's from us looking at Christmas trees. All right, now on this side, way over here, let me show you, way over here, there's some little bushes, okay? And we're gonna make those little bushes with our baby brush. 
Again, add a few drops of water if it's too thick. <clears throat> and I'm going to, I'm going to make a line up. I'm going to always come down to the center point. Actually, I'm going to go from this point up. That's going to give me sharper points. And I'm going to do that. Looks like an aloe vera so far, but I'm going to let it set and then I'm going to dry brush it. So up, and then one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, ten o'clock, nine o'clock, eight o'clock. Okay, now if you do it like that and then you let it dry a minute and you scratch, scratch it, it's going to mess up those exact points and just look bushy. Okay. Again, I don't know what that is in there. Now there's some more messy foliage looking stuff down in here and I can just do that by scribbling because I don't know what it is. Maybe those are grasses. I don't know. Maybe there's some in between the pine trees. I don't know what those are. So I'm gonna rinse off my baby brush. I'm gonna wipe it on my napkin. Wipe it on my napkin. Hopefully that's dry enough. And then I'm just going to start inside and I'm just going to dry brush it, scrubbing it to break up those little, to break it up so it doesn't look too exact. Because remember, this is far away, so they're not going to look exact. So I'm just doing the same scrubbing motion coming into that center point as I scrub with my dry brush. And that's breaking up those points, making it a little bit more fuzzy. It's also making it a little bigger, but that's okay. You can do that and then yeah and it's just making that looser looser and more fuzzy and that gives it a far away look and that's what I'm going for and I can do the same thing here now that these are dry and just scratch scratch and mess them up a bit because that's a far, when things are far away they don't look neat they look faded if you look at the mountains you can't see every ridge and valley it looks faded. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking this is pretty good. Not sure what you think. I think it's a pretty good match to, I think this one's a fairly good match to this one. Uh, you know, if, if I had my slightly brighter purple, I could have probably put in a little more. In fact, I still could. Oh, what the heck. It's my world. You're still with me. Let's, I'm going to add a little bit more purple on top of these colors and see if I can't brighten that up just a smidge. Right around, right around in here. I'm just going to see if I can brighten that up with a little bit of color. I'm just comparing this painting with the other one and just trying to approximate where I have some colors that kind of got blended in before and I want to bring back. I miss them. Come on, little friends. Come on back. Come on back. A little brighter. A little brighter. All right, come on back. Come on back. We'll get you a little brighter. All right, now you know what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to wait and let this sit a bit and I'm going to dry brush it just like I did before and get a few more of those lighter colors in there. And I think next time I paint this painting, I'm going to use a slightly better mix of red and blue. Again, you know, when you paint a lot, and if this is your first painting, awesome. I bet you did great. But when you paint a lot, you'll start to make friends with your paints. And you'll have, you'll know what a phthalo blue looks like. And you'll know what, it, what an ultramarine blue looks like. And you'll know what a cobalt blue looks like, but it just takes a lot of practice and experience. And then once you have that practice and experience, then you can really have fun in blending your colors. And you might be able to get 20 shades of purple. But when you're first starting out, don't worry. Just use the basic colors, red, yellow, blue, black and white, and experiment, experiment. Yeah, that's how you do it. You experiment and you learn by experimenting. You have to do things by trial and error. If you want to really learn it, it's kind of like if you move to a new place, the best way to get to know that place is to drive around or walk around or bike around. 
and get to know that place. I'm gonna put a little yellow in here too. Oh man, that popped, woohoo, that popped. I add a little white to my yellow and man, that pops, doesn't it? I'm gonna dry brush that in, but I like that. And see, I couldn't, I couldn't know that. I had to experiment. I had to play with it. And the more you paint and the more you experiment, the more fun you're gonna have figuring out where there's, where you can get away with stuff like this. I'm just playing now and I'm kind of looking at the original painting and thinking, where would I want a little more light, a little more light source? And I'm, again, I'm letting that set a bit. Remember before I dry brush it out, I'm letting it set a bit. And there is some right in here by this bush for some reason. Right there, there's plenty of light. I don't know what that is. I'm just playing around. I could be playing around with a small brush too. It'd probably be a little less dangerous because boy, sometimes I make mistakes and have to fix them. But with a big brush, you just make bigger mistakes. Uh, so I'm just having a good time here. Now there's this, I've said this a lot in my videos and I'm gonna say it again. There was a movie where the woman who was being painted said to the artist, how do you know when to stop painting? And the artist said, uh, or pardon me, she said, how do you know when a painting's done? And the artist said, when you stop painting. And it's true. I could paint all day. I could fiddle with this all day long. So I just finished my painting and I signed it at the bottom. And we're finished. Thank you for joining me today.